It's interesting the name of Facebook. Hello everybody, by the way. It's interesting that Facebook calls this Go Live because that's really what I wanted to say was that you, you realise that each move, each real, real change, transition period, it's all been by a direct revelation. So Moses had to go into the, you know, up into the mountain and be with God face to face in the end, 80 days without eating or drinking. Uh, then a change, a major change happened. Obviously, Jesus coming, he he. He changed everything from Old Covenant to New Covenant. But Peter had a trance. So he had a trance where he saw all these animals that he wouldn't touch ordinarily with barge pole, just coming down out of heaven, didn't he? So that was an update regarding Gentiles. And then Paul, after having um, caused Stephen's death, um he gets knocked off his horse, horse, donkey, whatever it was, um, by bright light. And he gets an update because he sees Jesus as he is now. The twelve at that point hadn't seen Jesus as he is now, today. And he saw straight through to heaven. And uh, wherever the I am realm is, uh, the eternal realm is, um, but, the, the, you know, he received a set of information that was brand new and which we have in the letters. But it's like updated information on how this new covenant works in a way that can be transmitted as instructions and teachings. Um, the apostles, they kind of just said, well, we were with him for 42 months and he was like this. <laughs> And obviously their in-depth knowledge of Jesus came, and, and they weren't even baptised in the Spirit, they weren't even born again, or baptised in the Spirit for most of that teaching time, were they? It was only at the very end, because of the work of the cross. So they had a take on Jesus that is quite unique, but obviously very powerful, and, and Jesus was completely restricted in how he shared. He, he could only use word, and he could only demonstrate outwardly what he had received in the anointing inwardly <laughs> so he he did say at one point didn't he he said i am constrained to send fire down from heaven this is just not fair how do i transmit this stuff it's the 30 years the only man ever the only man in history who had ever lived outside the genesis 3 lying delusional platform for 30 years untainted even though the whole of his community and everybody were living in that spirit what so to communicate that to the disciples, as well as this new anointing, this new fangled anointing, that was brand new in the earth, called baptism in the Spirit. And nothing to do with the Levitical order, because he was from Judah, separating it totally. So there's no confusion whatsoever. This is a brand new order of Melchizedek, which he came into when he rose from the Jordan. John said, hey, shouldn't I be being baptised by you? I'm not even worthy to undo your sandals. And Jesus said, do it to fulfil all righteousness. Which takes some puzzling out, doesn't it, that one? To fulfil all righteousness. So it's something to do with him having to go through the equivalent of the old covenant order, and bring it into the new. So it's something like that. But also it's a very key set of words that, to fulfill all righteousness, because it is talking of this new living priesthood that has the power to pray everybody in to fulfill all righteousness. My house 
is a house of prayer for all nations. Are you getting that? So this priesthood has a task and it keeps getting updated information. I get very puzzled. I've only had the experiences that I've had. I have not had some of the John Crowder experiences and the Mike Parsons experience and Ian Clayton and Kathy Walters and David Walters. I have not had some of those experiences. I have not had any Annie Miller visions and dreams which she's packed four whole books with. I haven't had that. So I want to be open in my spirit to to everything that God God may give. And Peter had had nothing until that point where he had a trance. That completely updated everything. In one afternoon, everything changed in one afternoon. And he was the one giving the keys to open up the keys kingdom of heaven. And those were the set of keys for the whole of the Gentile world. So you and I at last could do something. We were allowed near. You're guessing this. There is nothing in the Bible really about Feast of Tabernacles in the Spirit. What we got was Passover in the Spirit. Very clear, very clear. Jesus was the Lamb. It was always looking forward to Jesus. The Israelites thought it was just about getting through walls of water through a Red Sea. And that deliverance and the blood on the lintels of animals, that's what they still think to this day. But it was really like Abel. Abel, right in the beginning, by it was an anointed thing, Abel coming up with that tending for a lamb and then offering that single lamb in a sense just like the father only had one son and he offered his son so of course <laughs> Abel's offering not the spots off Abel oh, off um, Cain, Cain yeah off Canaan Cain the devil argues with that. I heard, I heard a, a testimony from an occult person who actually chatted all this over with the devil. And the devil argued that Cain, Cain's was the best, best offering. Because he hasn't a clue. He hasn't a clue. Or, he, or, he's, or he's probably lying. He's probably lying he has a clue. But he's not going to let on. So what I'm saying is, Mike Parsons might be right, but I don't know. All I can do is weigh things in my spirit. What can you do with a man who's investigating <laughs> changing time? <laughs> changing time and going into, you know, well, probably the accelerations of God. Same with Adam Cranifield, uh, um, Jacob, isn't it? Jacob Tietmeyer. All these, all these unique things. I'm not going to step into those territories until, until they are mine, until they're mine. But, the, but what I do know is the body is whole. And at the moment we have a mess up every high street. Everybody thinks it's enough to go to church. No, no, the time has just changed. The transition has just happened. Where through Norman Grubb, through Sid, if you like, it, through what Don Francisco's song, the Chainsaw Massacre song of the pulpit, uh, uh, highlighting what Sid was doing in the spirit with a, with a chainsaw. Jack Fortenbury, you don't think you're going to carry on as you, you've done for 2,000 years. The Jews had a kind of, kind of 2,000 years introduction period. Then Jesus came. We've had 2,000 years introduction period of playing a game of, of museums in Catholic and Anglican churches, a game of museums, but now it's the time for Jesus himself to come. Now, Anglicans and Catholics might not be, might, might not be interested in that, and, and then they might, at a pinch, be considering that it's, it's time for Jesus to come back. 
Well, it's even worse than that, because Jesus is now manifesting in his body in a location near you. And you have to recognize, you have to recognize the people of God and discern the body of Christ. Just living in your little pillboxes all the way up high streets. Don't be ridiculous. The times have changed. These things were sort of winked at while people were sort of growing and taking on board certain things and being very out of courts. But this isn't the time of the out of courts. The 1900s showed us we are not in the outer courts. With the pouring out of the Holy Spirit worldwide this time. This is a brand new thing. And then that Pentecost is not sufficient. Pentecost is only the middling feast. Tabernacles is a fine feast. But there's... Not a lot about it in the Bible. So where are we going to get it from? We're going to get it by going into the heavenlies and hearing from Jesus himself and hearing from the body, the living body of all crown of 12 stars in every location, giving live update information about what it is to live Christ as me in my form from the time we get out of the bed and the time we go into the bed. Everything upscales. You can't just stay at the same thing because God is bringing forth, is un incarnating something supernaturally across the whole earth. He always stated that. He promised it. Just as he always promised, the Messiah was going to come out of that people called the Jews. And he did. And he fulfilled Isaiah 53 that nobody was looking at because they had an idea of the Messiah as a deliverer. A governmental deliverer. But Isaiah 53 stated otherwise. Absolutely 100% bang on. And Jews still don't recognize that. In fact, all their authorities have ripped Isaiah out of their religious book. They so don't want the Jews to turn to Christ. So it is again. There's another transition. There's another transition. We're not playing silly games. We're a priesthood. You've been given instructions. I've been given instructions. You go into your inner room, you shut your door, and you go and meet the Father in secret. Then you gather together in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Anglicanism, not in the name of an Archbishop, not in the name of a Catholic Pope, not in the name of Bill Johnson, not in the name of Rodney Howard Brown. You gather in the name of Jesus altogether. And you take the consciousness that you learnt in your inner little room into church with you in the gatherings. And then having learnt those gatherings in 1, 1 Corinthians 12, you take that mobile out on the streets all day long. You know him in your form as you. You may do Jonathan Brenneman things and or, or other brothers and, and heal the sick and all these things. All these things are coming back online. They're all coming back online. But we've got a lot more to do than just two minute patch ups of people's bodies. We have a Genesis 3 to overturn over the entire earth. Because it's about the kingdom coming. The kingdom coming. Which is a bit different from your little soggy playthings up high streets. So we get this stuff live. I have no clue who's speaking 100% truth. But I do have this confidence. You know why I have this confidence? Because it's what Jorge Prados used to say. People used to ask him questions. And he would say things like, Could be. Might not be. Could be. Let's gather before Jesus. One time in France, there was a pastor who had two wives. 
Um, I don't think he was Muslim. I don't think he was, he was just a normal French guy, but he had two wives. And they all said to him, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? And Jorge said, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to have a gathering. We're just going to worship Jesus. We're going to let Jesus come. Well, Jesus came powerfully in the gathering. They never saw that man again. They never even addressed the subject. They never saw that man again. There are certain things we don't have to sweat over or struggle over or, or wrestle, wrestle to each, each other to the floor with if we can have gatherings which contain all the personalities, not just the Mark Fluffies, not like not the Math, Matthew Draconians with a sword at the door, and not the Luke people who, who hesitate for ages and ages thinking everything out, and not the John's weird and wonderful fantasy land. But put the whole lot together, you have a body that can come up with something half decent. And it might not be totally in the Bible anymore, but at least the pictures, the it will fit in with all previous pictures and revelations and it will make sense in the spirit. But how are we ever going to cope with anything that God's got for us while we are absolutely happy with all spitting in each other's faces in every town on earth? How's that going to work? This is urgency now. This is urgency.